So, Tony O'Brien, you're just about to be appointed Director General of the HSE, and there are, are, there are a number of new governance arrangements about to be announced. Uh, can you explain what those new governance arrangements are? Essentially, the new governance arrangements, which the Minister will commence at midnight tonight, mean that the board of the HSE will cease to exist and be replaced by the Health Service Directorate. That means that I will take up the position of Director General of the HSE and a number of directors will also be appointed to the directorate. And these will be Laverne McGuinness, the Chief Operations Officer, Tom Byrne, the Chief Financial Officer, John Hennessy, the Director of Primary Care, Ian Carter, the Director of Acute Hospitals, Pat Healy, the Director of Social Care, Steve Mulvaney, the Director of Mental Health, and Stephanie O'Keefe, who's the Director for Health and Wellbeing. So what is gone to rep and, and what's going to be replaced? Well, the board will be gone. What we currently call the Integrated Services Directorate, or ISD, will be gone. And these five new service divisions in mental health, primary care, acute hospitals, social care and health and wellbeing will take over direct responsibility for the services in those areas. In addition to that, the posts of regional directors of operations will be replaced by a new position called the Regional Director of Performance and Integration. There are four people taking up those posts. Okay, so do you want to, uh, are, are you in a position to announce who those new RDPIs are? Yes, the new RDPIs are David Walsh for Dublin Mid Leinster, Angela Fitzgerald for Dublin North East, Gerry O'Dwyer for, for the South, and Gerry O'Neill for the West. So, what's the difference then between an RDO and an RDPI? Well, the organisation has been split operationally into four with all of the operations managed directly with budgets and headcounts and so on by, regional, by the regional directors of operations. We're now organising our services around the five areas, social care, primary care, health and wellbeing, acute hospitals and mental health. And in addition to that, through the hospital groups and work we're doing on ISAs, we're moving operational control closer to services. So we no longer need the RDO position. What we do need to do is promote heightened degrees of performance and integration between different service providers and that's what the new role is intended to do. So in terms of the RDO's role and the new, RDPI, new RDPI's role, uh, will the RDPI's take up uh, these posts immediately and uh, who fills the role that the RDO used to do? Well, the three of the four RDPI's will be taking up their roles this week. Uh, one will be joining us later in the month of August. Um, over time, those roles will change from the traditional RDO role to, an, to this new role very much focused on promoting heightened performance and increased integration between our different services. But this is not a single day event. It's a progressive changeover from where we have been to where we are going. But it is a very clear sign that that change is now happening. And once this comes into effect at midnight uh, tonight, um, what is the next major step then that uh, people can expect to see uh, for changes in the health services? Well, the movement towards the creation of the hospital if I can just that was announced earlier this year will be progressing apace during the second half of this year. Recruitment is underway for the boards and for shortly for the chief executive officers of four of those six groups, two of the groups already being in existence. There is a review underway led by Pat Healy to determine what kind of structures need to succeed the integrated service areas. Once we take the hospitals out, those ISAs, as we've called them, are no longer the appropriate vehicle for governance. So we're working to see how many such organisations there should be, what their geographical scope should be, and how they should best be organised. And again, what we want to do is bring governance of non-acute services closer to where the services are actually delivered, just like in the hospital groups. If I can just take you back to the directorate for a second, um, has the directorate met at this stage? Yes, so the minister has now confirmed the appointment of members of the directorate and we've met as a shadow directorate just to dus discuss the various issues we need to be in a position to make quick decisions on as soon as the legislation is commenced. That's around putting in place the delegated management structure which is a reserve function of the directorate. So we've had those discussions and as soon as we get to commencement we'll confirm those decisions and we'll communicate tomorrow the full detail.